Hey everybody, Larry from the Shizzle Double here back again with a tutorial video. <clears throat> Today I'm going to show you guys how to configure EPSXE. Now, for those who don't know, EPSXE is, an, is a PlayStation 1 emulator that allows you to play PS1 games on your PC. Right now, I have it as a quick, t right now, it has it as a shortcut. It okay, I'm going to put it to you like this. You might think that. EPSXE is an install program, which it technically is, but it's actually a downloaded thing because I cre I actually manually had to create the shortcut as well as the taskbar as well because you're only downloading it. This is what EPSXE will look like the first time when you download it. Allow it to open. Hmm. It's going to look like this the first time around. You're going to have to go in there. I had to create this folder myself. And these are the ISOs. I have literally all the games on here. This is the latest version, but I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty. Now, first things first, I'm going to turn on DS4 Windows. And for those who don't know, it allows you to use your PS4 controller to play PC games. As you can see by the 43, the 43 Steam games plus um origin origin games that I have over here. Um yeah, I'm not kidding. I have forty three games on my Steam account and this is this isn't all of them though. This is only half of it. Alright, right now my controller's on. I will make a separate I will make a separate tutorial on how you can uh do this because it's really, really, really simple. People say it's hard, but it really isn't. You just gotta install just a few things, and you'll be on the go. <clears throat> All right, now let's. Without any further ado, hold on a second. Yeah. Now, without any further ado, let's get started, shall we? Now, first things first. You obviously want to open EPSXE. I'm gonna use the shortcut since it's right there. All right. This is version 2.0.2. This is the latest version. Oh, I forgot to say. If you want to buy an Android version, it's only three seventy-five, and when you're buying it, not only are you getting it for your Android, but you're also helping supporting the developers so that way they can make future versions. All right, the only reason how come it never went to the wizard guide is because I've already set up EPSXE, but I'll walk through the steps. It will take a little bit, as especially the load, especially with the EPSXE I'm using. So once you first start up EPSXE, this is immediately what will come up. Yeah, don't worry about all this stuff. Just go. Now, obviously, you can pick the SCPH one zero zero one recommended, but you can also pick some other ones. But the EPSX team recommends this BIOS, so we're just going to stick with that, especially if you're casual. Now, you just got to give it a few seconds because the latest version seems to be like a, just a little bit glitchy, but otherwise it's fine. So, just wait for it. Either it's my computer that's slow or something, I don't know. But um, the next question, not the next question, the next um, page is going to ask you to configure your graphics files I believe it's been a while since I've used the um, wizard guide alrighty after whew, a long freaking time of waiting <laughs> alright now I'm gonna show you which one to use now the EPSX team actually recommends the P the P open GL but for some strange reason, it really doesn't work too good on here. So I just use um, Pete's DX6 or D D3D. But I would stick with the OpenGL if I were you. Especially, once again, if you're casual. I just use this one. Now, um, I will use this for now and then I'll probably um, change it just a little bit later. But I'm going to stick with the one I've recommended so that way I can show you it. Now we're going to go on config. Here you can use your settings. This is the texture quality. Obviously if you want it fast or if you want the best colors ever. It says best colors, more RAM needed. Alright. Um, 
I'm just gonna put it on fast but less colorful. Just for a certain reason. Keep your color def on 32, especially if your desktop resolution is high. I'm gonna put this on window mode for the sake of this um you know right here. Um the specials game fix I highly recommend keep checking. You don't have to worry about the frame rate. Um, right now the default settings are on nice, so I'm just gonna keep this all the same. Don't mess with it once again if you're casual, but if you're hardcore, yeah, go ahead. You can you can mess around with it. Doesn't matter as long as you know what you're doing. All right, so that was the graphics. Now the next one is gonna um is gonna ask you to configure sound, and the sound is really nothing special, really. <clears throat> but I'm going to show you which one to pick. Alright. Now, the one that I recommend the most is the Eternal SCPU plugin. Oh, yeah. Just to give you a side note, these plugins don't come with EPSXE. I had to download these separately, but I'll make sure your plugins will be in the link below. I want to upload like a separate file on a downloading site so you can get it. Alright, so that's the eternal CPU drive. Keep that because it's recommended, like I said. And it's also recommended by me personally. Right now, the computer that I'm using doesn't have, like, uh... It doesn't have a disk drive. I know, this computer is pretty strange. But, if anything, I would recommend picking the disk image driver because you're only picking a virtual image. Only. So that's what so that's good. All right, the configuration pads, I'm not going to mess with this one because they're already set up. Cuz right now it's it already has the control set on my PS4 controller, so I'm not going to screw around with that. All right, and there you go. You've basically configured um APS-XE. And you can change it at any time by going to the plugins and changing the video. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the netplay. Once again, it's going to take a little while, so I'm going to pause it a, a little again. Now, Netplay is optional, but what Netplay does is that it allows you to play, um, you know, PS, your PS4 games online, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure which one works the best. It's only your personal preference, really, but I'm going to go with CyberPad 1.4. All right. Now that it's configured, some people won't doesn't even know which one to pick because I know, I know it's, it says that it recommends it, but I just wanted to give you this tutorial just to show you exactly what I recommend personally and the settings as well. The sound plugin settings, you don't have to mess with them, neither the CD-ROM, but the video is what you need though. And I just gave you my personal recommendation, especially if OpenGL doesn't work all that good for you. I believe OpenGL is for high-end computers, I think. But once again, I'll give it another shot a little bit later. Sometimes it also crashes the emulator, for me at least. But I do know that it does work, just probably on better computers. Alright, back in the old days, we would press either Run CD-ROM or Run ISO, where it's going to pull it up and pull up all your ROMs. Yeah, it pulls up all your ROMs, which is, which which itself is fine, but they made a more convenient way. Let me show you. They added a new option called Open Game List. Right here is all the games that's in my ISOs. Just have a look. Here, let me get rid of that. Crash Bandicoot 2, the uh, Gran Turismo 2. Legacy of Kane, the batting games. Don't play them as often, but yes, you're going to learn something about me after all. The only Swiss games I play are the older ones, like from the 90s or something. Those are the only ones I would ever play. Oh, including Tony Hawk as well. Tony Hawk Pro Skater as well. I love Tony Hawk. There's Mech Warrior 2, Mortal Kombat, Nuclear Strike, Ridge Racer, Resident Evil, the original Need for Speed, Tecmo, Super Bowl, uh... Tekken 2, Tekken 3, and the first two Tony Hawk games. Now, if you wonder how I did this, first thing is, once you first put the ROMs in the ISOs, it's not going to automatically generate the covers. 
And once you do put a new ROM in there, it's not automatically going to update. What you do is that once you put a new ROM in here, oh yeah, I forgot Warhawk. Well, yeah, once you put a new ROM in here, it, you're going to see an X. You have to press refresh. And then you got to press get covers. But, and, and then what it does is that it pulls up the covers of each game and it already knows which one it is. So yeah, this is a new convenient way of uh, actually working with this. Now, um, normally I would showcase Tony Hawk, but you know, I'm probably going to get a copyright strike for the music. So instead, I'm just going to run um, Tekken 2. How about that? Okay. Oh, and speaking of the net play, here it is. You can you can connect to any server. As you can see, there are plenty. There are like over a hundred servers online, on EPSXE with some people in them. All right. If you don't if you don't want to play online, just press cancel, and it'll boot up your game. Once again, because I already have my controller, I don't need to um, do anything special. As you can see. It works quite well. It's going to slow down just a little bit because of my screen recorder. So. <clears throat> just try to give you a quick idea of what it's like. So yeah, this is EPSXE and this is how it runs. It, it just basically plays like a normal PlayStation 1 emulator. Alright. So there you go guys. This is EPSXE for you. It's a well it's a it's a well made um e it's a well made emulator and it's it's one of my top ten favorite emulators of all time. Oh yes, I just gave that away, but I didn't say it's my favorite. No comment. Anywho, this is a great emulator and it's free to get for the desktop, but you have to pay um, $3.75 if you want to get it on Android. So it's great to have. Also, this isn't the only emulator that I have on my computer. Like I said, I have a bunch of my Steam. I have my Steam games right there. There's Do Doom, Duke Nukem, Geometry Dash, Final Doom, the Five Nights at Freddy's games. Oh, yeah, I got to re download FNAF World. Forgot about that. Anyways, but that's not important. There's some of my origin games, Dead Space, Syndicate. Oh yeah, once again, I do have, uh, also I have Battlefield 3, but once again, I didn't download it. So like I said, I have plenty of PC games on here. It's just that what you're looking at right now is only half of it. But I have way more than that. I have more emulators also. Virtual Box. Yes, VirtualBox counts as an emulator because it's emulating Microsoft Windows or any other, um, you know, systems, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I have a Super Nintendo emulator, Game Boy, NES, Genesis, Sega Master System, they all work. And they all have their individual ROMs that I already gave it. And like I said, they work. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And obviously, you see my background here. Anyways, um, yeah, speaking of the background, I'm also going to change the Shizzle Network thing to this one. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more videos from the Shizzle Network. And until then, peace out. This is Beyond the...